Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of our Building a Straw Bale Home Start to Finish series. I'm Logan Parker, and this is Air... Good design not only looks good, it also functions well. And it all starts with schematic design. During the schematic design phase, we take your ideas and shape them into a house. We develop your floor plan, the way the exterior looks, and how we're actually going to fit it on the landscape. On today's video, we're going to talk about how we use 3D modeling to get the biggest bang for your buck when designing a new home. Designing a small home can actually be a really big challenge. The owners of this straw bale home project approached us to help them design and build a small and affordable high performance home so they could move out of the city and onto a new family farm. A place where they could retire and help their son grow vegetables and raise animals for food. They needed their own house, something small but with big enough open space to host the entire family for daily meals. They were originally drawn to a U-shaped courtyard style house that would generate space for a south-facing garden in the courtyard and beyond. Lynn also wanted a vaulted ceiling with a loft floor to use as an office space. So we put all this stuff into a 3D model using SketchUp and it didn't work out well. The U-shaped courtyard was so small it felt like you were in a fishbowl surrounded by hot roofing on three sides. And using up some of the budgeted square footage made the U-shaped wings limiting the ability to create a vaulted section. We tried it and the loft barely had enough headroom to walk the length. And it really turned out to just be an expensive storage area. And besides, the extra lineal footage of the exterior walls in the perimeter created a U -shape, to create a U-shaped house was nearly double that of a rectangular shaped home. It was cost prohibitive and it made a loft not feasible. So the courtyard vision was out for now. We ultimately settled on a more classic gable style house with a rectangular footprint for cost savings and could keep the open area vaulted for a spacious feel and build a loft over the bedroom and bathroom. In this way, we could have 400 square feet of usable loft office area with, and high ceilings in the great room that would make the small home feel much larger. With a straight gable roof, we're also creating a nice flat pane for mounting continuous array of solar panels to generate all the electricity that we'll need to power this home. If we hadn't worked through the initial design ideas and put ourselves into a 3D model, we might have wasted a whole lot of money building a house that just didn't work out like the owner had hoped. Working through your house design in 3D at the schematic level is absolutely critical if you want to be 100% confident that your project is not only buildable and beautiful, but that it functions well. Schematic design is all about developing the house concept. Understanding the spaces that the occupant needs and wants and arranging them so that they flow together and function well when physically situated on the land. We take ideas and turn them into a buildable home. Sometimes we'll draw the rooms we need, measuring them on a scale of a quarter inch to a foot. You can do this with construction paper or graph paper and a ruler, or build the rooms on a model in a computer and arrange them together and extrude them into 3D to get a feel for what the space will really feel like in real life. With paper cutouts, you can easily flip-flop them around in space to find the right arrangement that makes the most sense. In the design world, we use a few terms that you may have heard before. Massing, floor plans, and elevations. You'll often hear designers and architects throw these terms around like it's common knowledge. But it's really not. So in order to help you understand what you're hearing and what to expect from the schematic design phase, I'll try to explain. Massing is the actual size and shape of a space that's determined by the functioning parts of that space. For instance, a bathroom with a walk-in shower and a clawfoot tub will need to be a few feet larger than a bathroom with a prefabricated fiberglass tub and shower surround. The freestanding tub may also want a big window to bring in natural lighting that wouldn't be possible with a more basic tub surround. Once we determine what the occupant needs and develop the basic massing for each space, we can begin to arrange the spaces together 
into a floor plan and elevations. A floor plan is a specific layout or arrangement of rooms that makes up a house. It's usually a two-dimensional drawing that clearly illustrates all of the components and rooms of a home. It's helpful in demonstrating how the rooms and spaces flow together, where the windows and doors will be, where the stairs and closets will be, and all that kind of stuff. As we develop the massing and arrangements in the floor plan, we generate elevations, which are images of how the house will look from each cardinal direction, north, south, east, and west. We typically like to orient the bedrooms with east light to illuminate the space with morning sunshine. In the same respect, we try to find trees that will cast shade from the west to minimize overheating during the late hours of summer days. We also make sure to provide daylighting to the workspaces. Living in a house with good views can be inspiring. In fact, the views sometimes completely dictate how we orient the building altogether. These are just some of the considerations we make in creating a beautiful design that functions well. Designing for the site. Orientation matters. You can't just take your favorite floor plan and plop it down on a piece of land, especially if you have key features of the landscape that you want to orient to, like a really sweet view of a pond or mountain, or access to the sun for passive heat gain and solar energy production. One of the biggest challenges of custom home design is combining all of the occupant's needs and wants into a working floor plan that works well when it's built on the land and natural terrain. The pro version of SketchUp has a geolocation feature, which we use to illustrate how the building will sit on the land. It's so cool. With ease, you can locate your site and import a pretty accurate terrain map that shows the contour of the land and get a really good idea of how tall your foundation walls may need to be to accommodate the sloping terrain and figure out where a basement or a garage, for instance, might be best suited on the landscape before you get too far developing a floor plan that's cost prohibitive to build on the land or have to start all over with design. Of course, getting a survey or shooting elevations yourself will be the most accurate when you get closer to the design details. But SketchUp can get you really close without having to spend a lot of money on a detailed survey in the beginning. The schematic design process often takes longer than any other phase of the project, but it sets the course for the rest of the design and the build project. So it is crucial to get all the concept details worked out so you don't have to backtrack when it gets really expensive and time consuming to make those changes later on down the road. If you have a budget on how much you can afford to spend on a new home, then now is the time to design the home that fits that budget. Start by figuring out how much each type of space is going to cost so you can build the mass of each space to a scale that's affordable. Taking the budget into account early on can save you a lot of time and thousands of dollars. Make sure to check out our video on cost planning to get a better idea of how we accurately break down the costs of building a new home. We typically go back and forth a bit with our clients to get their feedback, make revisions, and then build a design that works for the owner, the site, and the budget. Once we develop a floor plan and elevations that everyone's stoked on, we'll be ready to start developing the nitty gritty details and material selections, get a detailed estimate together, and then start pulling permits to build. With an open mind and a little perseverance, we can take this schematic design phase to really focus on the big picture and build a beautiful home that feels good and functions really well. Make sure to stay tuned for our next episode on design development and permitting. As always, y'all, thanks for watching. Until the next one.